There are signs, red flags, or stuff like that that can give you an indication if something is not good or not doing well. They are not always definitive, but when you start combining it with other things, you start to see maybe this game is not doing well, especially on the sales side of things. For Dragon Age The Veil Guard, it looks like one of the biggest pieces of evidence for this is now that they are dropping a part of the game now for free. My best guess is this is because they want people to try and then get them into the game, and potentially by providing them some of it for free now, that is a way for someone to maybe try it and then want to move forward with buying the game outright. This reeks as an act of desperation for a failing game that did not garner much of an audience to begin with. So apparently you can download the Veilguard character creator for free and start tweaking and making your own versions of Rook, the character that you play as. There seems to be no time limit tied to this as well, so you can really just get into the weeds if you so choose and make the avatar you want. While this seems like a simple thing, a piece or a feature of the game that is given out for free, most people will probably just pass this by and pay it no attention. But if you take a moment to give it some thought and start to put other pieces together, you can see that this appears to be an act of EA or Bioware trying to pull new players in. The game has been out for a few weeks now, almost a month, so those that were interested in buying this game have already done so. It would appear that if the number was high, then this move, this free drop, would have not happened. But one could infer that EA and Bioware are not pleased with the numbers that they are seeing for this game, and want to pull in more players to it. I would argue that this is not the most desperate move that they could do. By having the character creator, it sort of lets the player tease with the potential of playing the full game, let them engage with creating an avatar, and then they are really able to get something kind of tangible with it. Sure, they could share this on social media, make some silly creations with it, but that's about it. But I do think there is something smart by letting the player toy around with the creator. This allows the player to put their own personal stamp on something. When they create a character, that is a form of creativity, whether it is small or large, the player is then getting to toy around with this stuff, and as a result, making a personal connection with it. That might be a draw enough for someone who might have been slightly interested in the game to now make that purchase after toying around with making their character. I do not think it will work on many gamers. I do not think this will be the thing to really tip players into playing the game more than whatever EA is seeing for the current player count. But it might be the first in a campaign for the game to have a bit of a second launch after the initial release. Back to my point is that the character creator is a way to pull the player in. I do think an act of even deeper desperation would be to allow the player to then use the character they created to then play the first area of the game or the introduction. Allow a fresh player to then get their hands on all the stuff and gameplay. For a really good game, this could be a way to really pull the player in. Having a really exciting opening, and now the game hooks the player. Currently, EA is not doing this. This is also a red flag sign. Giving part of the game away for free post the launch of the game, as being a sign that the game is not selling well or really doing well for the company. Look back to other games you have seen this happen too. Post the launch of a game, when they do a free weekend relatively close after the launch of a title, that tells me that the company does not have the player count that they either projected or intended on having, and doing something like this is a way to sort of get some more player buy-in for it. We saw this with a few of the prior Call of Duties that did not launch that well as Activision wanted. Now you could argue that we've also seen free weekends for successful games, and that is true too, but that usually occurs much later, like many months or even a year after a game has come out. Those things that are so far out could be sort of a way to help generate buzz for a new DLC, expansions, and content then being added to the game. Get people to come back, create hype, or have new players join in for the first time. I did this early on with Rainbow Six Siege, as I wanted to try the terrorist hunt mode, and it had been a while since the game had been out, and then it had its stable base. Now you could also argue that we have seen games prior to a game's launch allow you to play around with the character creator to sort of build up hype for the launch, or let you play the opening hour, and then your progress transfers over to the full game. Again, the key thing in those situations is that those times they occur before the game has launched. With EA and Bioware trying to find ways to get more people to buy their failed Dragon Age game without actually begging, this is where we are left, in one of those situations where it's a post-launch desperation. 
Now let's factor in some other things to consider as well. Let's look at some of the current numbers of the game. As we can see from Steam DB, the player count is about around 10,000 players, with that launch peak being around 90,000. I know that the game has launched on PC, Xbox, and PS5, so I do not have definitive numbers for Xbox and PS5 right now. But if we are conservative, let's just say that across the board, there's 30,000 players for Veilguard. That is really low considering that this is a huge big budget RPG from one of the most well-known RPG studios. Even worse so when you look at the launch peak for this game being under 100,000 on PC. Again, I am using this as a good comparison with Baldur's Gate 3, which had a significantly larger launch just on PC. And I guess you could say too that maybe more people are playing Dragon Age on console. Maybe that is the case, but Dragon Age has a really strong fan base on PC, with many people preferring to play those games on PC, going back as far as Dragon Age Origins. So just looking at all of this, the numbers are just not there for Dragon Age, especially considering that this was such a big game. And we are not even factoring in refunds that Steam allows you to do too. So just looking at all of this, and now a part of the main game is being available for anyone to try out for free to lure in new players, I really do not think Dragon Age the Veilguard is doing well. Honestly, in a situation like this, I would probably go to bat for something like it. But the key thing here in this particular situation, this game is not good at all. And then I remember all of the horrible writing, disrespect that this Dragon Age game did to its own legacy and characters, deviated from the core Dragon Age combat. Overall, this just disrespects its world and especially the fan base. I think Dragon Age the Veilguard might be getting exactly what it deserves. So if you want to toy around with the character creator, go right ahead and maybe post some of your funny results online. But I do not think this is going to be what tips people over to be able to turn this failure into a success. But maybe I'm wrong. What are your thoughts on all of this? Let me know in the comments down below. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please check out my Patreon page. For just a dollar a month, you can help to keep this channel going strong, and this allows me to be able to do more for my awesome audience. Please check out the links in the description and pinned comment for ways to support the channel. And most of all, thank you very much for watching.